insurance is a national issue, um, housing, you know, gas. These, these are things that affect everybody. Causes chaos and creates pain and suffering, but also creates are the best companies in the world. Yeah. That's also the, that's the difficult part here. If you think about the European approach is that we are lagging behind. US is, is the superpower. When you look at the companies over there, Google's and Microsoft's and, and they have Facebook's, they have created amazing platforms, uh, which Europeans, we are so far, you know, behind. Juha Berkal is the co-founder and CEO of one IO, the first and only integration service that runs IT service integrations on the cloud. In this conversation, we talk about education in the US versus Finland, whether the Finnish education system is set up to create sheeple or entrepreneurs based on the fact that they have a really interesting and unique way of viewing education. We talk about the differences in socialism and capitalism and their roles in creating entrepreneurs. I hope you enjoy this episode with Juha. Let's get to it. So Juha, I've interviewed a few people from Finland before, and despite the extreme temperature and uh, lack of sun for long periods of time. You guys seem to be quite happy. Why is that? Well, I guess that it's a, it's a sort of an attitude that um, Finns have, um, that we have learned to cope with ourselves, by ourselves here up in the north and um, sort of um, just fine with things in life as of today. I guess that's, that's where it's coming from. So we're not like super, um, like people are not super like saying out loud positive things because something b- mad, bad might happen. So we are just fine as of today. Happy with what we got. So Finns try to live in the present, you mean? Sort of, yeah. Okay. I've done some research on the education. And many years ago when I was living in China, I was an HR manager for a private school. And I insisted on hiring people that had master's degrees in education, which I got one or two of them of the five that I hired. And I tried so hard to hire someone from Finland because from my experience or from my my research, Finland has one of the best education systems in the world. And so I really wanted to have that influence in the school, but I wasn't able to hire anyone, although I did try very hard. Um, and I did interview a few people. What is it about the Finnish attitude that enables this kind of fantastic education system? And if if you don't mind, explain kind of uh, if you understand the difference between like, I guess, uh, an American education mm. and a Finnish education or, yeah. or Western, yeah. kind of what makes the difference? Yeah. Well, um, I'd guess that the, this is one of the things that back in the day uh, when we need to re- rebuild the society, Everything is based on everything is based on like equality, so that all the people here have a starting are on the same level. So, as as you might might know, we don't have this history of glass society like likes of you know UK, Sweden, all these like. So we don't have that. So it's super equal, um, and the schooling system is free or prepaid through taxation. So we are a prepaid country in that sense that. Um, all the people, all the kids, they go to the same school. There is no private, hardly any private schools. So most of the kids are going to the same school, which means um, on a kind of a micro level, uh, in a classroom, you are on the same level, regardless of your background, of your parents being super rich or poor, you are in the same room with everybody. So that's where you learn to cope with different kind of a kind of a, People with different backgrounds, I guess, and then of course the the education system when it comes to teachers. Uh, teachers are they all have master's degree, so you don't get to, into the teaching without having the master master's degree. So it's six six years of education. What I heard was that the education system was designed, and correct me if I'm wrong. I guess like. The kids start later in the day, but they end later in the day. The purpose being to give them the time to sleep at the right hours so that they wake up at a time where when they start their schooling, their brains are actually ready to receive information and process it. Because like in America, the kids go to school, I think, a bit early um, and they're, they're just like exhausted. Is, is there that that? We start start normal like eight, nine, but school days are not that long. So in the or like the... Earliest stages in in the like 
school ends like midday, something like that. So it's not that long. So you don't like you don't have to spend the whole day there, and maybe that helps you to to learn. Mm. I also heard that the focus was on projects, like giving kids the skills to create things. Yeah, well, I guess that the, one of the things that uh, uh, Finnish schooling system has has it also has a little bit of downside is that um, it's not something that teachers are just you know in the front of the class pushing stuff to the kids so that they are involved more in the in the kind of learning and experiencing things, not just you know listening the teaching teacher to you know explain things in front so maybe that's that's what you're referring about the projects but it's a it's a kind of a we have quite quite um sophisticated methods that are used and there has been a lot of studies about how uh kids in different ages learn what it, which is the best way to learn so I, I guess that that's one of the things that we have been we've been able to implement um downside of of um teacher being i don't i guess not in the position of traditional teacher is of course when you have some challenges in the classroom so there is like the authority of the mm. teacher it might not be um, you know sufficient <laughs> but i feel like even with that perception of having less authority that there might be less problems in the average classroom in finland than in a country like the in a public school in the US because there's more of a homogenous society and because yeah. so like for example yeah. there's I came across when I was in college I was shadowing uh, some uh, counselors guidance counselors speech with their uh, speech pathologists um, occupational therapists because of my degree in psychology so they they wanted me to see what it was like to work in the public school system and I got to work with uh, kids in primary school and mm -hmm. they stuck me with the kid stuck is the wrong word that's not fair they paired me with kids who came from homes that were challenging for them to navigate and so I got to see firsthand <clears throat> what it was like for the kids and the kids would have private time to talk with me and tell me what's going on in their life and kind of help give them an emotional outlet and and my goal was also to give them an opportunity to play while they were talking with me so that they would be able to express themselves in mm. a way that could allow them to feel better, you know, because sometimes these kids have uh, some sort of violence in them that the, mm. they, they have, it's harder for them to control their emotions because they're yeah. not used to seeing emotions being controlled at home, unfortunately. Um, so I got, to, so from my experience, I got to see some of the issues that uh, kids might experience. And I feel like when that's in your classroom, it's very difficult to be very disruptive because the kids just aren't aware and they might get violent with their classmates because they just, that's what they see. And so they emulate that. And so um, I feel like in Finland, maybe that doesn't happen so much. I could be wrong. Well, not so much. So I guess that um, since society in general is on relatively good level, Although in recent years we have had have more and more like these sort of issues that I I I think the schooling system is not ready to cope with. So um, there are a lot of like things that have been like changed in the schooling system lately, meaning that the bigger glass glasses so that uh, they could have uh, like forty people in the same glass or something like that. No. So when there is this distraction and things like that, so it, it really culminates um, in the classroom. So I guess that that's one of the things that at least it has been discussed. And actually my wife works, she works in the school and um, like she sees that the, especially after the COVID, they see a lot of, a lot of these kind of new kind of issues with the kids yeah. who, who couldn't sort of, especially in the early, early teen, teenage um, they kind of lost a couple of years of developing their their uh, sort of a, um, social skills, skills, social skills and stuff like that. So maybe we see some consequences out of that. Hmm, for sure. <clears throat> so do you feel like the Finnish education system promotes creativity, imagination, and this kind of ability to be an entrepreneur? Or would you say it's more in line with like creating a society of people that just kind of do what they're told? Because this is a big problem in America. We, we call uh, someone, I've heard, some people say uh, the word sheeple. So, uh, you know, sheep people, sheeple. Mm. 
it feels like the American education system was created in the beginning of the Industrial Revolution era and hasn't been changed, despite the fact that our society has evolved beyond it. And as a result, the kids are taught to do what you're told, show up at this time because I told you to, you know, show up at that time or leave at this time because I told you to. You can't go to the bathroom unless you raise your hand and ask for permission, right? It's designed to teach you to do what you're told and to be a good little robot. And mm-hmm. my hope is that, or my, my, and, and yet, despite all that, <laughs> Americans grow up to be very independent, very creative, very imaginative, and very entrepreneurial because of capitalism. Do you think Finland is designed to create entrepreneurs or to create like robots? Um, I think our, our approach is a little bit different. I per- personally, I don't see anything bad with rules and restrictions and boundaries for the kids in certain age. Um, what the whole aim of Finnish and schooling system until people are 15, 16 is that you are brought on the same sort of, a, not on the highest level, highest performance or the, or the kind of, a, but it sort of, uh, if the, if the grading is from one to ten, the the objective of the schooling system is that most of, it's successful when people are on eight. That's the goal. So it's not aiming to perfection. So if somebody mm. really wants to go to ten, they must do something themselves. So the school mm. is not aiming for that. So it means that people are coming from the out, out from the school. It's sort of a similar like a <clears throat> knowledge and know how and competence and things like that. And then after that, um, they get to choose if they go to high school and then they kind of go to college and things like that. So there's a lot of um, freedom to choose and then you don't have to worry about, you know, university is free of charge. High school is free of charge. You don't have to worry about that. So you get to choose and it's your responsibility at that sense that after the basic school stuff is given to you, then you get to choose, but you don't have to worry about how much money you have to put in or take student loans and things like that. Oh, Maybe don't that get me started sort of about America. The, yeah, sort of the freedom in, I guess, in, in the US, even though you are like the brightest mind, you might not end up in the path of college and university because you don't, you can't afford it. So that's sort of holding people back a little bit. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people I've talked to recently that are Gen Z, they look at like, so they're, they're like finishing high school now, some of these guys. And they're like, yeah. I don't see a reason to go to college because I've got my e-commerce brand or I've got my digital media marketing agency and mm-hmm. I'm making twenty, thirty, fifty thousand $50,000 a month. What do I need to go to school for? Yeah. So I, I think a lot of people are seeing that college is becoming irrelevant because well, you go and you study for four years, you get into $100,000 a debt or more. And then you can never pay it back and you'll never earn enough to pay it back in a given year. That's, that's, plus, yeah. plus the interest and and you start paying the bills and then let's say you meet someone and you want to marry them. All right, well, mm-hmm. co- the wedding's going to cost $40,000. The ring's <laughs> going to cost another like ten or 15000 And then you get into the house and the house yeah. is going to cost you $100,000, $200,000 for a deposit because of the way yeah. the housing prices are. And then you're going to have mortgage at 6 7 8%. So you're going to pay another few thousand a month to pay for the mortgage and to manage the bills. And then you've, you know, you've got two cars. So you've got the down payments on the two cars, 5,000 each or so. And then you've got a thousand dollars a month for the car insurance and the car payments and mm-hmm. the gas, uh, you know, and then you want to have kids. The kids are going to cost 20 or 30,000 each at the hospital. You know, by the time you, you get, you know, two kids, like you're half a million dollars in debt, <laughs> you know, like how are you like, that's just how are you supposed to have a life, right? So mm. that's one of the reasons why I left America, you know, as soon as I finished college, literally two months after I got my degree, I was gone and I've never moved back. It's been 15 years now. And I know so many people that are trapped. And so I, yeah. I, I'm i living in Europe now and I love the fact that people have free healthcare and free education. And, and I feel like it's much better quality. And I think a lot of people look down on other, a lot of Americans look down on other countries like, oh, America is the best. America is so great. It's like, mm. yeah, but all these other countries, like people aren't killing themselves. They're not shooting up schools. They're not filing for bankruptcy because they have good quality education that's provided them by the government. Sure, they might make less money than you, but they don't have to worry about filing for bankruptcy or paying for their doctor bill. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a really good point. And if you think about the like whole, um, especially in the Nordics, where I'd guess that if you take a, like a really like 
proper American person, they might see this is almost like a socialist country. Like everything is covered by state and you're paying a lot of tax. Mm. But in turn, you get the, you, you know, the less stress about your future. What, what ifs? There are lo- less what ifs. What if yeah. something really bad happens? You don't really have to worry about that because of the healthcare. If you have kids, if you go to the hospital, it, it costs you maybe 50 euros to give birth. So like, yeah, it's prepaid. The- it, it's prepaid. But I, I guess that the problem here is that we might end up, and it, there are some, some kind of a signals already that we might end up in this situation that the tax, less tax you get, the more debt you have to take as a state or a country. So it's sort of a, mm. how do we, how do we fix this problem of people getting older and then we don't have people paying the tax to keep up yeah. the system. So that's a kind of downside of it. It is something that I've been watching and it's something that's concerning because population is declining all over the world. Yeah. And as a result, you know, as you said, there will be less young people to pay into these mm-hmm. systems to take care of the people who can't work. And eventually the only solution is to raise taxes yeah. and people are going to riot. You know, there, there is no way to solve this besides mm-hmm. raising taxes or striking oil or, yeah. you know, creating some other or kind regions. of industry, right? There, there's just no way. So it's quite concerning what's going to happen in the future because of that in the next few decades. Yeah. And this is, this is something that is uh, like this traditional Western Northern European countries that we used to this like welfare society approach that everything is given to us. Like we are entitled for these things, which is, I think, one of the biggest issues at the moment as, as we started this discussion about Finns being entrepreneurs and things like that. So uh, the reason me being entrepreneur uh, is that I believe that we have so much, like that the foundation is so safe and sound that we should be able to do more, much more. Right. Because we don't have to worry about these things. And uh, now the question is that, like going to the, your question about sheep, um, the sheep, like if people don't see it like that, they just feel like that I'm entitled for this because my, my parents paid the tax. Hey, just give me 10 seconds of your time. I really appreciate you listening to the episode so far, and I hope you're loving it. And if you are, I would love to ask you to subscribe to the channel because what we do is a lot of work. And every week we bring you a new guest and a new story. And what we do requires so much love so that we can bring you something amazing. And every week we're trying really hard to get better guests that have better stories and improve our ability to tell their stories. So your subscription lets the algorithm know that what we're doing is fantastic and no commitment, it's free to do. And if you don't like what we're doing later on, you can always unsubscribe. And either way, we would love a like if you don't feel like subscribing at this time. Thank you very much. And we'll take you back to the show now. So I don't really have to work. I just go and get like the daily allowance from from the state because I just want to you know, do whatever I like, not to like push anything hard. Push. I don't want to push harder because I like it's already paid. Mm. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges that I, I see at the moment. And also the, the, the sort of the attitude and um, legislation, taxation, all of those things that when you are taking the risk as an entrepreneur, um, there's a little bit like that you are, if you fail, you're sort of a second class. Mm. As an entrepreneur in Finland, so it's it's yeah. Um, there's a bunch of differences there. So yeah, th- this is something interesting I've noticed as well. Is that I like life in Europe because I can see that people care about the quality of their life and their relationships with other people more mm-hmm. than their work. Yeah. And maybe it's because they feel safe on a daily basis, which is such an amazing feeling. But at the same time, they don't feel the need to excel above other people. And then you look at the U.S. and I feel like maybe people in America are more entrepreneurial because they're so much in debt that they feel they have no other option but to try to beat everyone else in order to save themselves. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, for example, something that makes me push hard 
is that my dad's a dentist and he can't afford to retire. So I like I have to make more money so that I can give him money every month for the rest of his life so that he can afford to retire. Yeah. And I can't even afford to do that yet. Yeah. Because I feel pressure. I'm like, I need at least half a million to a million a year to be able to like have my own life and make my own investments and have my own you know, wife and kids that I don't have yet, or I mean, I was married before, but to have a, a, a new wife and, and kids yeah. and to be able to take care of my parents, it's like, I feel like I need at least half a million to a million. And I'm living in Europe. And I know that there's Americans that have this mentality as well. Some millennials or Gen Z, yeah. and they're like, oh, I need, a, I need half a million a year to survive in America. Some people. But then you look at Europeans and they're like, yeah, I make 15,000 a year and like, I'm cool. Yeah. So, so one of the things, of course, is that like, um, you don't really have to worry about that because it's it's taken care of. So that I guess the stress levels all are lower, but that leads into this like um, people, as you said, maybe laying low just because they can. So who is then gonna pay for it? It's not gonna happen. Right. Like we cannot like look at Italy for instance. Their debt is like so huge that it's it's almost too big to fail. Like mm. because of the society doesn't work anymore. As, as it, as it was designed to. Hmm. There's definitely a lot of differences between what Americans would consider socialist countries and what Europeans would consider socialism. And that's one of the reasons why the U S is so anti people having the things they need for a good quality life, because yeah. the core concept of capitalism is, Hey, you need to be responsible for yourself because nobody's going to help you. If you don't help yourself, no one's going to help you. Where yep. in Europe, the concept is, hey, we got you. You're good. And there's actually this there's approach towards this universal basic income um, that there's some programs that have been done in Canada and the U.S., and the original idea was if you give people extra money, they're just going to blow it. They're not going to do anything, especially there was a program that was done with homeless people, I think in California recently, and they gave them like $500, no questions asked per month for like a year. And okay. at the end of the study, they, fa they made the assumption, some people made an assumption that they were going to just buy more drugs. But what they found was the people that received the money by the end of the year were an extra 15 or 20% more likely to have stable housing and have money saved and, and looking for work or having a job already. So these people were specifically rebuilding their lives where when you give that money to people who already have jobs and they already have homes and they're already, quote, secure, they found a way to make improvements to the value of their home or to be able to... Um, pay for better education for their kids or to be able to have better quality food instead of eating at McDonald's, they might, you know, buy better food from the grocery store and, and cook cleaner. Yeah. Meat. And so it's quite obvious, you know, from the, the programs I've seen that have been done so far that giving people a little bit more money leads to positive results for society. And I feel like, if we were to apply that to the idea of let's give you free healthcare, let's give you free education, then people would be in a better mental state. They would have better emotional relationships. They would have a, a better life. The problem with the U.S. in that regard is that the lobby industries, right, uh, big tobacco, big uh, pharmacy, big pharma, whatever, their job is to make as much money as possible for the companies they work for. So – they have no incentive to lower the cost of medications or the machines that they sell to the hospital companies, et cetera. And the hospitals don't have an incentive to lower their prices. And so a lot of like pharmacies, pharmaceutical companies, for example, they, they specifically charge more to Americans to cover their ability to offer things for cheaper in other countries. So you might spend... $5 for a box of pills or a bottle of pills in Finland for the same thing in America, you'd pay 50. Why? Americans will pay more. They don't have a choice. 
And so we, Ameri- well, I don't want to say we because I don't live in America, but essentially yeah. Americans are subsidizing the health and welfare of other countries. Because when you're in the US, money talks. And so if you have the money to lobby, then you will lobby. Where in other countries, you don't really have this so much. And so people just have better quality of life. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the reasons why I don't want to live in America. And if I have another you know, wife and, and have some kids, I don't want to raise them in America. I don't want them going to American schools. I want them to have the ingenuity and the creativity and the imagination and, and possibly the entrepreneurial spirit if, they're, if that's what they want. But I don't want them to grow up in America. But is it, is it so that the, this, when you say America, um, because it's a kind of quite a bunch of different states, states that you have there, Mm. So does it apply across the whole America, United States, you know? I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah, because there's national issues and healthcare is a national issue. Yeah. Insur insurance is a national issue, um housing, you know, gas. These these are things that affect everybody. Mm. Education, yeah. you know, uh student loan debt, but it it's funny how it it causes chaos and creates pain and suffering, but also creates the best countries in the world or the best companies in the world. Yeah. <laughs> that's also the, that's the difficult part here. If you think about the European approach is that we are lagging behind. US is, is the superpower. When you look at the companies over there, Google's and Microsoft's and, and they have Facebook's, they have created amazing platforms. Uh, it's Europeans, we are so far, you know, behind. So that's sort of the yep. downside of so how do you, how do you actually play this? There's <clears throat> less, there's less investment going into startups in Europe because yeah. one, there's less money that's, that's liquid in European economies for that. And Europeans are more conservative. And so they're more likely to look at public markets or real estate rather than, something that's risky that could lose me my money, for example. Yeah. And so the European startups I talked to look for to Silicon Valley to get their investment. Yeah. And Silicon Especially Valley if you have like, something new. Yeah. Yeah. And Silicon Valley will look all over the world because Europeans, since they have a lower, uh, not a lower, since they have a different concept of money, they might be able to invest 500,000 in a company and get a 30%, you know, equity. But in an American company, half a million will get them 5% at the same stage or 2% yeah. at the same stage. Um, and, you, you know, you look at Asia and it's something similar. Just the, the cost of living in those countries compared to the U.S. gives the U.S. an outsized amount of cash to invest in companies that have a lower concept for what their valuation is as well. Yeah. So now the question is, how do you balance these things? Like, that's the question. How do you balance these things? Like the happiness of the people in general, growing the economies, like this, it's a, it's a interesting well, question. I'm not a politician, but I'm sure if I were, I would have a very different view of how things work. It's easy as an outsider to politics to go, oh, well, you just do this, this, and this, you don't allow this thing. Yeah. But then, you know, I, I feel like Obama had like a specific idea of what he wanted to accomplish. And I think he got into office and was like, Oh crap, I'm not going to be able to do any of that stuff. <laughs> um, so I think, I think a lot of people that are well-intentioned come to realize very quickly that uh, their hands are tied by the mechanisms of society and politics yeah. and lobbying to prevent too much change because change is scary. <laughs> yeah so from your experience as an entrepreneur living in finland and i guess you've traveled a bit as well what's the most important thing you've learned in your life so far um surround yourself with with uh, people with good heart good intentions and also um i i strongly believe in giving back to the society by doing this, taking a little bit of, of risk at myself as well. So that's sort of, I don't know if it's a learning, but that's how I think. You mean by having a company and hiring people? Is yeah, right? and growing business and paying taxes and all that. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Well, it's definitely an interesting insight. I appreciate this conversation. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.